Was the show real? No one ever handed me a script. Abby. Done. You, Abby. They would tell us we had to fight or we weren't going to go to dinner. So when I got mad, I was really mad. Which you were not, because you didn't show up to do your job. No one knew it was going to be such a phenom. I am the I best thing for pay. But yeah, guess what? My daughter was a wreck all freaking week. My girls haven't ever danced since the day we left that show. It was that bad to them. It's the end of that. The producers were the one that actually made the pyramid. Get lost, bitch! So at the beginning, we had to pretend. <laughs> Shut up, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm keeping um, my mouth cut over here. The cameras mm -hmm. never captured mm -hmm. that. They never captured it. A comment like that is going to get you fired. Deal with it. We are the original Dance Moms here reuniting with ET. Welcome, Dance Moms. I'm so excited to talk with you today. We are going to be covering everything ALDC and beyond. Introduce yourselves and who your daughters are. I'm Melissa and my daughters are Maddie and Mackenzie Ziegler and they are 16 and almost 18 now. I'm Holly Hatcher Frazier, known as Dr. Holly, and I am the mother of Mia, who many know from Dance Moms, who is 19. Hi, I'm Kelly Highland. I have Brooke, who is 21, and Paige, who is 19. And I am Jill Vertez, and Kendall is my baby, who was on Dance Moms with me, and she is now 17 years old. Wow, I, I cannot believe time has flown like this. I remember watching Dance Moms with my mom. My mom was also a dance mom. So that was our bonding. But Jess, was your mom a dance mom? I'm sure she wished that she had the guts to say some of the things that you guys did. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know if it was guts or stupidity, but okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> you stupid, you know what? No really? one said yes, really. First of all, let's get into why you're all here. Your podcast, because mom said so. What inspired the decision to start a podcast? So I was thinking um, about all the ladies and I thought we should do something together. The moms have had, we've had such a great bond together and our girls still have an amazing bond and so do we. So I called all the gals and said, hey, can we get together? So we decided to get together and we brainstormed and we thought it'd be really fun to get together and do a project. What kind of things are you gonna be covering on the podcast? We talk about really no topics are off limits with us as usual. We like to t give advice and we like to tell stories. There were, you know, a ton of iconic fights on the Dance Month the show. So are we gonna get a little bit of that in the podcast or are we all just like smooth sailing from us? Oh gosh, no, there was no fighting. Oh, we're not fighting. Our fights were like, I First doubt. Of, they would tell us we had to fight or we weren't going to go to dinner. Were there any moments when that actually got real? Oh, yeah. Oh, it was oh, real. Yeah. When I got mad, I was really mad. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I liked when you got mad, Holly. Just saying. Abby, I would not go there. This is ridiculous. I think you've lost your mind. <laughs> I was going to say, it took you're all a lot very to get good Holly actresses. Mad. <laughs> the, em yeah. the, the emotions were totally real. The tears were real. The anger, all of it was real because Really, we were protecting our children. I love that you're all still super close, but I can't help but notice there's a certain mom missing here. Is there, are you guys still close with Christy? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Christy Kelly, was... I know you two are very close. Have, are you still in contact? Yeah. Yes, we are actually. But yeah, I talk to her all the time. So what's a reason why you think fans of the show should listen to the podcast? Well, as my husband would say, we got a lot to say. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we're <laughs> funny together. Like when we, when it's all of us together, it's just, we start on one little subject and it just goes. Yeah. And I think it's nice that people get to see, you know, the real, the real us, of course. And, you know, our kids have grown up in the spotlight and just to show they're normal. All of our kids are such normal human beings. And I also think a lot of our fans and followers are invested in us and they're invested in our kids' lives. They've watched them grow up and they've grown up with our kids. And we've all have evolved as women. We're not the same women that we were. Oh. We are on the cast of Dance Moms. And I think we want to share that with people and people are interested and we thank them for that. If I was on the show now, it wouldn't be good. I probably would be kicked off the show. 
Well, you guys definitely had to go through a lot and you went through it together, which is why I assume you're so, so close. Take me back to how the show got started. Well, it's interesting to, to think that far back because that's almost a decade. Um, but the show started really as um, this idea. When I first heard about the show, I honestly did not think it was real. I thought, who would ever watch a reality <laughs> show about a <laughs> Pittsburgh? Like, From just, Pittsburgh. I was like, who? What? and why. I remember going in with Mia to audition for the show and I let her do her own hair and makeup because once again I did not think it was real. So the girls did audition for the show and then from there I think three months later we got a call while we were eating dinner that we were cast for the show and I remember we left the audition I told Mia they will never pick us for this show because we are too boring. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, and then they gave us, they handed us these little cameras and they told us what to film, you know, us as a group. I don't think they originally wanted our dance studio. They were going all over the country and they were going to get just kids from different studios, but then they just liked our, you know, our okay. group. So is it going to be a quiet day up here? Are we talking to each other? How did your families react? They thought it was a joke too. Don't you think guys? <laughs> It was yeah. like six episodes and they're like, if you don't sign this paperwork right now, you're not going to be on it. And we're like, I remember calling Kelly. I'm like, are we signing this? <laughs> like, oh. Well, Jess, it, no one knew it was going to be such a phenom. You know, like I came on on season two. They had reached out for me and Kendall to audition. And originally it was supposed to be for a couple episodes because each season really we never really knew how how many episodes they were going to shoot at least early on like it just kept going and going and going and that you know we'd sign on for six episodes and then they'd make you sign a contract for 23 more wow. we would shoot up to 36 episodes a season you must have oh. been exhausted <laughs> yes Our well that's why we were crazy because we were <laughs> Yeah, but we didn't want our, it was an opportunity for the kids. Like, I think all of us, we didn't do it for, we did it for the children. Oh, I didn't do it for me now, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, we wanted them, they enjoyed it. And, and we wanted them to see what it was like to travel. Literally, we traveled around the world. Ha having our kids dance, it was a great opportunity. And I think people didn't expect that. No one could have predicted the success of the show. And it really changed the landscape of, reality TV with children in it, as well as dance. And I think for some things for the better, but I don't think our families could have predicted that. We certainly did. Yet never expecting it would be years long. Like it was hard for us yeah, who yeah. had other children at home because we would travel every weekend and be working every night. And our children who weren't on the show were without their moms. And that, that was difficult. What is one question that you would say fans ask you the most about your experience? Is it real? I think the, 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 the question that yeah, fans ask real. the most, I think is, was the show real? Well, was it? For me. Yeah. It's real for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> people want to know, is it scripted? And I will say no one ever handed me a script. Absolutely I not. know there are reality shows which are, are loosely scripted, Ours was, not, we never got a script. We never got a yeah. script, but they knew what they wanted every week. And well, that I set you up. I mean, and that's real like, reality shows did, you know. The producers would have three storylines that they really manipulated us to get to. You know, um, they would create these storylines just from listening to us talking. We had those mics on for 20, oh. you know, 12 hours a day. So they would hear us talking our personal conversations with our friends or our children on our phones, home to our husbands. So they knew what was going on in our lives. And I know for me, it took me a while to figure that out. I'm like, how'd they know that? Oh, they heard me talking on the phone when we my mic was on. And we're like, wait, yeah. you heard yeah. it on. <laughs> but so I they can imagine they at some it. point they probably caught you saying something that actually did turn into a real fight. Because Absolutely. Maybe, oh, right? I think absolutely they did that. Like they gave ever, all the moms a letter for me. I think it was an invoice for something. All of the moms received a letter from an attorney saying to cease and desist discussion of Melissa's personal life. So it's like, you know. Yeah, yeah I do. Re I remember that. I yeah, was, they created I was, situations to get us all wound up. 
Right. They're, <laughs> to get the group. And no one knew the truth. No one I knew. I would never sue my friends, just saying. <laughs> is there anything, like, could you not talk about that during the time of filming? Oh, of course, but they yeah. cut, they can edit you the, any way they want to edit you. Yeah, there were a lot of things said, not in the context where they had a saying them. Yeah. Right. Remember when, Ke like, Kira, for instance, threw a bottle at a, per at a camera person or a producer? You're trying to make up to cause drama. So walk your that way. It was so funny. And it made it look like she was throwing it at one of us. And she really- Well, but she was mad. She was mad at the producer. She whipped the bottle and they made it look <laughs> like she was throwing it at Jess. And she didn't. <laughs> I do they love the cutaways of your faces. Those are, I can- I do too. Well. All our eye rolls and- <laughs> Well, I'm gonna take you on a little trip down memory lane here. Ooh, la la! Maybe it's just me, but every time Kathy and the candy apples came around- We walk in and there's Kathy. Prada, a Prada bag. I don't have time for my enemy. I don't wanna look at that woman. I got a little bit excited, okay? Christy can come after me. Get out. Oh my God. You you're are gonna such hit me with your purse. Uh, Obviously, Jill, you went over there for a little bit. Look at Jill's face. <laughs> Jill, you have to answer this question because she's your BFF. Not to my liking, I had no choice. Kathy was the antagonist of the show. So don't say anything about my child ever again. The producers loved Kathy and Vivi. I pretty much took center stage and I improvised. What is she doing? This is my opinion. Vivi didn't even like to dance. Do you know what I mean? Like our kids were dancers. They would, when the cameras were off, they were there till midnight still practicing because they wanted to be good. They wanted to look good. Vivi didn't, Vivi did it because her mom really wanted her to. But the producers loved Kathy and they wanted her in those shows at any cost. So they shipped me over there. You know, I didn't want to be there. And Kathy and I never really cared much for each other. Uh, so at the beginning, we had to pretend. <laughs> Shut up, Kelly. <laughs> but, I'm keeping um, my mouth shut over here. All right, Kathy, here's your costume. Help the rhinestones give your daughter some luck. Yeah, uh, yeah, Kathy was, Kathy was tough. She was tough. She didn't like me because I kind of feel like I saw her for who she was. She was using the system. She just wanted to be on TV and wanted her kid on TV. That's just my opinion. I think Kathy was there for all the wrong reasons, just to be an idiot and, you know, drive all of us nuts. And it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. I didn't mean to do that either. I will say she was entertaining. She yeah, I know. Fun. People loved her. Fun. That's she why she kept coming on. She's a really nice woman in real life because we still keep yeah. in touch. Um, and she's I just always really tell sweet. people that. When really? When fans ask about her, I always say, Kathy is very different like talking to her in real life than what she appears on the show. Like she turns into like <laughs> like a cat or something when the cameras come on, it's really funny. You guys are cracking me up. <laughs> well, I wanna also bring up the iconic pyramid. Let's move on to the pyramid. Was that pyramid set up specifically for the show? And did that ever draw a wedge between your girls? I think the beginning it might've bothered them. But then I think towards the end of the show, middle, like. After season two, they were like, oh, this pyramid's just for the show. So, you know, but I think in the beginning it did bother them. Since Brooke's not in the pyramid, does that mean she's not going this weekend? Well, and then they figured out that the producers were the one that actually made the pyramid. And yeah. sometimes we would wait for hours to go into pyramid because Abby would be fighting with the producers. And then, you know, the pyramid, I mean, then we'd stand there for five hours, literally. I mean, that was the worst day of the week for the girls and for us. And I dream. Yeah. All I the fights happened on Pyramid Day. You're exactly right. Yeah. But we've all well, you said, said something things. mean to my face about mine. I, I said it to you. And I did not say it to your daughter. It doesn't make it okay. okay. Well, that we all have done it and we need to move on. Well, a lot of them. A I lot should. of them. But it always started with Abby being angry with the producers because she didn't like either a storyline or the title of, because that's when she would give out, you have a solo, you have a duet, these people are in the group. And she, and the producers would determine that and Abby never, never agreed to it. I'm Abby Lee Miller. I know what I'm doing. She always wanted to change their plans, their pyramid, their solos. 
So we would wait, we would come sit ready to film and sit there sometimes for hours waiting for Abby and the, and the producers to quit their fighting and arguing. And how many times guys did she storm out, get in her car, pull away and we're, we're sitting there. An hour or two later, she comes back, right? Yeah, I think that yeah. the whole idea about the pyramid and pyramid day, which usually was Wednesdays for us, was the pyramid, but we never before had a pyramid actually in the studio, but I think it represented the idea in her mind of who was on top and who was on bottom. As arbitrary as it could be, I think the pyramid always existed, but it wasn't in a visual format. Right, right. If you're on the, the bottom line of the pyramid, I think Abby's trying to tell you something. So I think it was very real, but the seeing it play out in reality is a really different experience. Mm -hmm. And I think when, what to the, the ladies are saying is absolutely, if, if there was a disagreement about who would be placed or who would get a certain assignment, more so because if it wasn't a directive, then some kids would never dance and would never see the other spot on the pyramid except for the bottom. So I think there had to be someone else looking out sometimes because otherwise some people would be absolutely neglected. Yeah. yeah, you're right, Holly. Agreed. Very much agreed on that. Get out! I kind of want to draw your attention to that, actually. Holly, you brought up something interesting, and I'm going to direct this toward you and Jill. Why did you stick around for so long? People do ask that from time to time, and I think some people don't understand. Well, if, you're, if you don't like it, leave. And I am a person who believes very firmly that we leave when we say we're ready to leave. Whatever you're doing, double it. I don't want anyone in my children's lives to dictate to them, you leave because I'm forcing you out or because you're not wanted. It's your choice. Now it's me Nia's choice. Whenever you're ready to leave, we can leave. So that's the reason why we stayed. Mm -hmm. See, I was the total opposite. My kids were ready to leave. So that's why we left. And like, I had had enough. So that, that's why we left. And we left season six because my girls said they didn't want to do it anymore. And I said, okay. okay then we'll leave. You stay because you, you have to take the good with the bad. And it wasn't always bad. There was a lot of good too. I mean, the kids walked on red carpets. They met superstars. They won, you know, Nickelodeon awards. They got to, you know, sing and, and have number one songs. So for me and Kendall, there were times when I said, okay, I think we're done. And and it was hard. The producers wouldn't let you just like, walk away. But then, you know, Kendall would say, well, yeah, but I really- Hey, you're gonna to fight like me and then you can get out. <laughs> <laughs> I had to smack Abby and pull her hair. Girls out the room, yeah, girls you out the room. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Um, so bottom line is you have to take the good with the bad. And and I think, I don't, I don't have any regrets for staying as long as we did. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, season eight, they wanted us back and we were like, yeah, now we're done. Like once the minis came on, then we were totally finished. No, we wanted to leave for sure. Um, my kids had just had it. I have had it. Um, you know, my kids' personalities really changed. Um, my kids used to be so happy to be at dance and they just every day got knocked down and knocked down and I just saw it changing them. And I didn't want them to have to deal with that anymore. And they didn't want to do it anymore. So that was basically why we left. I want to go home. We are. <laughs> Paige was frightened because Abby is a 400 pound woman and threw a chair with my daughter in the room. You can credit me for the rest of my tuition for the month. And rip off my credit card number. It was sad Kelly was going with the girls, um, but you know, it was time for her. Did they ever miss it? Like once you guys had Never. left or? Never. No. And my, it, like I said, it, they, it totally changed their lives. My girls haven't ever danced since the day we left that show. It was like, it, it ruined their whole perspective of dance and reality TV. Like they, they don't want to be on another show. They, it, like even if they were at, like they just don't want to be in that environment anymore. It was, that bad to them. You are out of control. Let's shift gears to the woman who cannot be stopped, Abby Lee. Are any of you still in contact with her today? No, not me. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm not in contact with Abby, but 
now occasionally she'll she'll jump out on on my instagram and and say something but i don't i'm not in contact with her but okay. she lives in la i live in pittsburgh i don't i don't see her you want to leave leave this is a new phase this is a new chapter to your story i love that you guys are writing the narrative with the podcast now like you're turning the page you are talking about your friendship now which was never exactly a centerpiece right. exactly right? yeah now we have this friendship and we've got so much to say and so many stories and things going on and we're raising our children, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, we are always here for each other, which is great. Um, like if I ever needed one of the moms, I know I can call and say, oh my gosh, I need help with this. And they would <laughs> all be there. And that's how we are for each other. And so are our girls. I mean, our girls were always there for each other and it's, it's pretty darn fabulous. Maddie was laughing the other day and I'm like, who are you talking to? She goes, Brooke. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, mom, you know, so I don't know what her and Brooke were talking about. You might not want to know that. I probably don't want to know, but it's really a great friendship that we have and the kids. There goes Jill. That is Jill. She is so funny. Sorry, I'm so sorry. There's a cult following around your these amazing women that you've raised. Uh, do you think it was all worth it? I think that, you know, being on the show is for sure worth it. I mean, it was um, hard, but it was so much fun. And these girls have lasting friendships as well as we do. Um, our kids are all very successful and very kind, humble, sweet individuals. So, I mean, I think we're really blessed. I think the kids' personalities for the first couple of years, they were very young, but their personalities were stifled a little bit. They weren't allowed to, you know, there's a funny one and there's a, you know, there's so much to each one of these kids that people didn't see the real yeah. children. They were babies. They, they went through puberty on national television. Yeah. Talk about yeah. don't talk back, you know? <laughs> like like they had Brooke be the miserable teenager all the time and she always looked grumpy. Brooke was never miserable. Brooke she always was smiling. 24 seven. I mean, they had so much fun together and I wish people saw that. Remember they would order like filet mignons and baked potatoes. Oh yeah. They'd order $500 <laughs> worth of food and never eat it. Oh, it was just really And it fun. is a shame, Melissa. Like when you saying that makes me smile and it's sad oh. that they never captured that. The cameras mm -hmm. never captured that. Oh. Um, they never captured it. And let's get an update on all of your girls. My girls are 16 and 18. Um, I think they're they're doing so great. Maddie is actually moving out on October 15th, which is crazy to me. She's going to be 18. She just got her new place. Um, and um, Melissa. And Mackenzie is doing so great. Um, she's singing up a storm, recording, doing lots of projects. So. My, my most important thing is that they're kind humans. Mia is in LA. She's done a, a wide variety of things. Bold and the Beautiful. She was a, a regular cast member on that. She's recorded some music. Um, now she's a full-time student at UCLA and she has some other projects that are coming up as well. But for me, I'm just really proud of the young woman that she's becoming and that she's taking this adventurous Spirit. Brooke is living in LA. She uh, graduated a year early from OU with a double major and immediately moved to LA and got a job there. And Paige is, um, she has an apartment at West Virginia. She's going to WVU. She's a sophomore and they're both doing great, enjoying life. Kendall is, um, she's my youngest, she's 17. When we left LA, I put her back in our public school she is in her senior year and she's really keeping busy even with covid and everything it's kind of um a little bit of a letdown for her senior year she's still singing and dancing and performing when she can we you know she's an influencer we do auditions in la when we can and i'm just trying to give her a normal finish up to her childhood and then, you know, she wants to go off to college. So we're applying for colleges now and we'll see what the future holds. Well, how do you all feel about the show seemingly ending now? If it were to come back in some capacity, would you, you know, pop in? No way. 
<laughs> I, I think Honestly, I feel like my story's been told. And by the end of my the season seven, when our contract was up, I, I told a lot of the moms that were coming on, like, no need to fight with me. I'm just here to finish telling my story. And I think everything we've needed to say has been told. And well I said, on a good on a good note. And I'm happy. I'm proud. I have no regrets. Very thankful and blessed, but our story has been told. What's the uh, one thing you would want fans to take away from the show and from your relationship in general? Um, can I just say, sometimes, you know, I'll meet someone, a, or a fan or someone will come and say, oh my gosh, are you Kendall's mom? Are you dance mom? And, and I don't, they can't judge us the moms or the children from what they saw on TV. And I know that you guys saw over 200 episodes of these kids, but they really just, just give them a chance to get to know them. Don't judge them or think you know them from something you saw on reality TV. You know what I mean? I, I think all of us are just normal moms who want the best for our kids. My lesson that I learned from the show would be to stay true to yourself. Because if you're authentic, it's you. You have nothing to apologize for being you because that is who you are. So as long as you stay true to yourself and you're authentic and you're transparent, no regrets. This has been a like beyond treat for me. I am so <laughs> happy to finally be able to talk with you all since I watched you for so many seasons. So thank you so much thank for being you. here. Thank you for having us. I'm yeah, so thank happy. Th and thank you everyone for watching and make sure to take a listen to Because Mom Said So, wherever you listen to your podcasts. All right. Thank you. Thank Great you. Awesome. Bye, girls. I miss you guys. <laughs>